26, North Gaston 21, St. Stephen's 55, West Caldwell, uh, that's 7, Patton had 29, East Park had 7, move over here to this last four, Hunter Huss, the Huskies, the Huskies, they were pretty husky over in Kings Mountain tonight. They were. They were. Hunter Huss is at 38. Kings Mountain 21. Ash, uh, Chris 31. Ashbrook 21. Uh, Ashbrook 20, excuse me. Burns 38. Stuart Kramer on a bone coverage 42 at the end of the game. Uh, Shelby 49. Chase 0. Let, let me, let and me just And the beat goes on. <laughs> Let me just send my sympathy to the folks over at Chase. <laughs> 51 0 and 1. 51 0. And as you were saying. And the beat goes on. <laughs> All right. We got Mountain Out of Charter bouncing back this week against Trouble 41 to 7. <clears throat> and we got North Lincoln 24, East Lincoln 16. Uh, that last score, North Lincoln. 24, East Lincoln, 16. You know, North Lincoln, West Lincoln, a tip of the hat to both those teams. They are pulling some upsets and surprising yeah, people you, this now, year. Not, not only did you give the power to West Lincoln, but North Lincoln I didn't want to bring that up because Terry Reinhardt is a near and dear oh. friend. And, uh, <coughs> Wouldn't that give North Lincoln the power? Well, Will, if, now if that you've you mentioned the it. the reigning superstars. <laughs> yeah. You uh, beat them this year. The season. football gods in Lincoln County are uh, <clears throat> smiling on some different <laughs> different teams this year, I think, Will, if that's the, that's the way you want to interpret that. But it's good to see that these other teams are, are uh, not traditional leaders in Lincoln County are having some success this year. And so I, I want to give a tip of the hat to both West Lincoln and North Lincoln for their success this year, and may they continue on. And the other teams that are struggling a little bit, just remember, you know, the sun don't shine on the same dog all the time. There you go. All right, well, let's talk about that first game up there. I hope, Joel, you're out there and you're calling in tonight. We need a play-by-play -play on what happened with Hunter Huss in Kings Mountain. Is Hunter Huss for real this year, Will? Can oh, they no, do it? No doubt they're, they're for real. You don't pay a powerhouse like Kings Mountain and, and have them 21 to nothing up until the third quarter. Well, I saw Huss play Shelby a couple of years ago down at Shelby, and they give them all they could handle. And everybody thought last year Hunter Huss is the team that's just going to come in and blow everybody out. And they sort of tripped and fell and didn't do anything. But this year they seem to have gotten their act together. The players are playing, the coaches are coaching, and they're winning right now. And Kevin, of course, has them ranked as number one in the poll this year, and they're living up to that. We've kept our eye on Hunter Huss, just waiting for them to stumble at some point. As Terry brought up a couple of weeks ago, <clears throat> some of the coaching friends that he has in South Carolina said they could play with the South Carolina schools, and that is a high compliment to the team down there <clears throat> that they could hang with some of those uh, Rock Hills and Clovers and the schools down there. So uh, congratulations to Hunter Huss. And up next for Hunter Huss is that other team that beat Ashbrook tonight, 31-20. So uh, <clears throat> come on over to the corral next week. I believe they're playing at Crest. Let's see. No, at, at Hunter Huss. Got to go down to you know, Gastonia down there and uh, play the Huskies. That's always a tough trip when you go down there. And uh, we'll be carrying it right here on KTC Broadcasting for you. Right, Kevin? <coughs> yes, sir. Breaking score, I want to say this one uh, because it is the – both teams came into this game winless. Bunker Hill over Drone. It was Drone's homecoming, though, ruined the homecoming. 37-20, the Bunker Hill Bears win – uh, tonight over the Drawn Wildcats. And well, they, that wasn't very nice. Though. No, it wasn't. But somebody's got to win that game, Dennis. So. Uh, well, they don't have to unless they, they tie. They, they hey, could have tied. Hey, while we got here, uh, in, NFL breaking tie. The NFL tie breaking. This is my this is my suggestion. See what y'all think. Since we, we don't want to have <laughs> – 
concussions. Yeah. We don't want to have any more playing, any more playing football. Cause everybody's going to whine about having to play more football. Mm-hmm. Which, so, whatever. Anyway, for fun, instead of ties, kickoffs. Kickoffs. You put the f- ball at the 50, bring the kickers out. First one to miss loses. First one. Well, not miss. You know what I mean. You kick. It's like, you know, hey, I kick. You the kick. First, we the miss. first you, one it makes, you know that makes it win. What they got the other one making? You know they got a match. Does that make, not move back five yards every every uh, every time every time both make? But does that not favor the dome teams, Kevin? Who cares what it favors? We've already played overtime. <laughs> it's better than a tie. <laughs> the, if, if if hockey and soccer can do it, I, that, that's my proposal. We talk about that more in the morning, though. I, I think we'll what we ought to do. <laughs> I agree. It, it, I mean, you're a Packers fan. You want that? Yeah, or, or, you, hey, or you want to just kick it off? Yeah. Just come out to midfield <laughs> and rock, paper, scissors. That's just that's better that, than that. There you go. Yeah. But best two out of three rock, paper, scissors. I mean, that, that, <laughs> kick, that kicker may stub his toe or something. You know? <laughs> well, Dennis, yeah, congratulations to the Bunker Hill Bears on their first uh, win of the night. Uh, have y'all done the scores? I was done the hog We've done the, the scores. We can do them again, Kevin. I, no, uh, a couple of notes. Uh, I was over at Kings Mountain tonight. Uh, Hunter Huff's got a squad, folks. They were number one uh, coming in tonight. Number one versus two in our matchup. Uh, Kings Mountain, the last couple of weeks, uh, they've just been uh, snake bitten by the turnover. Like, yeah, just balls dropping here and there. Picks. Guys, they had a pick six tonight on a, like, bubble screen. Like, the, the route was jumped. So, at some point during the game, the same kid, um, and I think it was Mitchell, and I, I may be wrong, uh, where I'll look it up, but he had three touchdowns and two picks. That was all the scoring and all the all the, the whole wow. game. The one kid had all that. Well, yeah. I was over at Crest tonight, Kevin, and I'll be He's the one that jumped the bubble screen, by the way. That 31-20 score surprised me. It was 10-6 to 6 at the half, and then they, they were scoring as I left, made it 17-6, to 6, and then I don't know what happened uh, – Terry Reinhardt was in there just just clicking away on the scores going on and everything. But that's the big showdown next week will be Hunter Huss and Crest. And what I've said, and you guys are my witnesses here, if you can beat any two of the Hunter Huss, Crest, Kings Mountain teams, you're conference champion. And they've got one done tonight. They beat that's Kings the conference Mountain. champion next Pretty much, that that would be for the conference championship. Is is Kings Mountain? Uh, we were looking at November fourteenth for the Crest and Kings Mountain game, but what happens if Crest doesn't win next week? Automatically, I think Hunter Huss becomes the champion, and Kings Mountain and Crest are battling for second place, and that's important in if, the seedings. If Huss does beat Crest next week, they finish at home against Forest View at Stuart Kramer at Ashbrook. So two on the road to finish the season at Kramer Ashbrook. Not two easy ones. Yeah, on the road, and of course, the, Polish the big up game the against crown, Ashbrook. Get the trophy ready. Go ahead and send it to the engraver <laughs> if they beat Chris so next caught, week. Dennis is high on the Huskies, I think. Uh, they're number one in our poll. Uh, they're going to be again after tonight when we get through with that. But we haven't done this week's poll, Kevin. Yep, we're gonna get and that. I see some teams up on that top line. Terry's Changing so excited. Terry. Terry? Terry's so excited. Give me a little chorus of that move. <laughs> 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 They are going to – Terry, they're going to move up. I'll give you – I will say that. What? And, no, they're, they're not going to the <laughs> <laughs> He wasn't talking about West right there. He was actually talking about East Brother for you folks listening on the radio. Uh, for you folks listening on the radio tonight, we got a special broadcast tonight. Uh, for, uh, if you're – somebody in Cherville is wanting to know where's the broadcast, uh, you have to listen to Lincoln or the Shelby broadcast. Watch us online on YouTube because Atlanta Braves baseball – Yep, is on right now. Against the, now, I, I we'll get know. some updates by the way, Terry, on on that, Mr. Anything, Score Man. Anything of Indian heritage is not done well in the playoffs. Have, have they not? <laughs> the do, you, do you want the an up? Do you want an update now? Yes. All right. Uh, Dodgers two, Braves zero. Top of the fourth. Oh hush. <laughs> Dodgers two. I'm sorry. That's okay. The Indians took it on the chin today. The Braves took it. Uh, TKO last so night. In 13 innings, the Braves hadn't scored, haven't scored yet. Well, I tell you what. I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I hate to be the bearer of bad Stop. news. But I watched, I watched the Dodgers last night, and somebody asked me about that game at the fair when Calvin and I were over there broadcasting yesterday. And I said, man, I hate they're playing the Dodgers because you talk about they're the West Lincoln of baseball teams. They're strong and powerful. And they, them boys just smacked it out of the park. Boom, boom, boom. Throw Hugo on the ground. Like he that. fell. Uh, I didn't. I didn't throw him. 
I got another one behind me, you guys, but back, back in the show. Uh, watch everybody on YouTube.com. Uh, Just search at uh, KTC Broadcasting. Uh, dot com. Um, let's see. Uh, so we're gonna do the top twenty just a little bit. Uh, some some of the, some of the big games tonight. Uh, I do want to mention uh, the streak continue tonight. Um, I didn't know. I did I, <laughs> twenty four to nothing. I guess that, that twenty four sixteen. That's the big. That's the big upset of the night, Terry. Uh, or that we think is the upset. People thought. I don't know how many pick, people pick North Lincoln, even though they beat West earlier. Uh, did anybody on the pregame show pick North? No, none, none of y'all. Bunch of losers. Uh, oh, you Kevin. and Shannon and Shannon Allen and Carson Docker, y'all missed that one. Speaking <laughs> of the streak, the streak himself is on the phone line. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Steve Gurry. I'm sorry, Steve. You're you on go. there. I, I, I was checking notes and the news and notes. Steve, the streak continues 49 nothing, buddy. What's up? Hey, how y'all fellas doing? Oh, we're, we're doing good, Steve. Steve. Eating pizza, forgetting about you. You got that monkey off your <laughs> back, Steve. You're still 51 0 and 1. <laughs> Yeah, we did. So it was, uh, okay. Uh, when I when I took care of business tonight, um, let's see, let's see. they um, we got off to a great start. Got up, you know, when we played everybody. Uh, so Howard Mitchell had a great ball game. He had a punt return, set a shovel record tonight. Had a 97 yard touchdown pass. All right, and 97 yards. 97 yard touchdown pass. He ran back a punt, and he also had a touchdown run. Then um. I, uh, we also had a pick six on the defense. Um, the shot, Christopher, intercepted one and ran it back for a touchdown. So they kept the ship offense off the field. And then uh, Tavares, Tavares Scott, the senior guy who's been hurt a lot, he got to play tonight. He scored two touchdowns. And also uh, Dante Fuller scored one. Well, and uh, in the second half, we had to run the clock. So we've been finished a long, long time ago. It was 42 nothing halftime. So come back out the second half at one o'clock, and then uh, Coach Ware played everybody to dress out tonight. Uh, even we even put the water boy in there a little bit at the last. Oh, the water boy! How'd he do? Yeah, yeah he. Uh, well, he, he had about four carries and <laughs> two touchdowns too. Well, so, uh, we played everybody tonight, and uh, it was just a, a good win. And uh, try to get the matter of fact, brothers, we didn't even get to play match now tonight because uh, we had a we had senior night. Shepard decided to have senior night earlier this yeah. year, and we had senior night tonight, so there was no national anthem tonight or anything. And then we had the presentation from uh, from Grant from my school from Jefferson School. Yeah. And uh, so we didn't really get to have a national anthem tonight. We're just pulling your chain a little bit, Steve. We understood that y'all were threatened with a 15-yard penalty if you played the national anthem tonight, and we wondered what's going on, and now you've explained it. It was senior night. So, anyway, we're just having a little fun with you there <clears throat> on the national anthem deal because I tell you what, Shelby High School <clears throat> and David Allen, the principal over there, y'all patriotic folks. So, anybody who's got any comments or questions, uh, we'll defend you on that uh, in terms of, of what's going on. But we know that you have. Now, my, my friend here, Will Boykins, is going through the book. <laughs> this is the Terry Reinhardt. Is this the New Testament or Old Testament, Terry? This is the Old Testament. Old Testament. So, Will, I'm going to turn it over to you to go through the, the, the chapters. Are you going to start with Exodus or I, Acts? I just want to read that. That actual, just one big piece of this book we have here Steve yeah from 1959 to play to, to present they've met before tonight they met 53 times Chase and right. Shelby met 53 times right Shelby had 52 wins Chase has zero wins they have one tie and their tie was back in 1968 and it was a 28-28 ball game but Shelby right. come back and beat him in the playoffs Right, they, that was the Gary Cobb show. Yeah. I was matter of fact, I was a young guy. I was I was at that game, and then the other the second game was played at Gardner Wheel. Yeah, it was bitter cold, and it was Gary Cobb, Elmer Makerson, and Thurman Lisk was in the backfield. I remember that. And, uh, Shelby High, you know that Calvin, that Calvin Hammett, Reverend old James Smith. Yeah, Reverend James Smith, them. my old friend. That we worked at Rays together back then. He was he was laying the smack down back then. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I told him, every time I see him, I tell him I said. Rick, you run me a tight end hot. He said, I might, but I don't know if I can get it in for you. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, and then they also honored the, uh, the one the, the 1,098 football team, state championship team yep. tonight. They honored those guys. 
for uh, for the state championship. All right, Will. What else have you got there that just stands out in that? Five series? playoff, play, five playoff against each other. Uh, 1968, 1969, 1998, 2011, 2012. Shelby won all five games. Uh, Shelby has the longest streak. From 1968 to present, 43 games chased, longest streak zero. I I think um, you know well if you check, I think we played him in '76 too, over at Gardner Webb when they had Billy Ray Bickers, you know uh, Ray Harris. Matter of fact, Chase scored first, and then we beat him like 29 to seven mm-hmm. over at Gardner Webb. It was it was bitter cold that night. I think that was in maybe uh, that was the '75 football season. I'm not for sure. Well, but I think we put him in the playoffs that night. Steve, all this is courtesy, of course, of Terry Reinhardt, who couldn't remember that the McSwain boys play, played yeah, for, I'm, I'm for the one Chase called, High School I'm the one earlier. Called, yeah, I'm the one called and told him the McSwain boys. Yeah. He, could, I, he, got, he said he had a senior moment, so I know I know how that is. Well, I tell you what, I was coaching at Crest back in the days those uh, boys were playing, and um, I'd, have, I'd like to have a senior moment and forget how that. <laughs> they ran over us back in the day. They were those were two good guys. Went on to play a little ball at Clemson and uh, the Cowboys NFL. And so uh, hats off uh, to Chase and the McSwain uh, boys for uh, great legends over there. Yeah, we played them too in uh in one year. Coach, uh, they put what they we put a spy on Chuck. Yeah. Uh, Charlie Charles Spann. I remember that game. Forty-four Charles Spann. Yeah. Put a spy on Chuck. Everywhere, uh, Spain, uh, Chuck with uh, Charlie had to go to. And we played him in Shepard that year, and we beat him. We, you know, of course, we beat him. Well, Steve, it's always a pleasure to talk with you. We know that you've got RS Central next week, and RS Central got beat tonight by East Lincoln. Will, what was the score on that it, one? Uh, RS Central, they got beat by East Rutherford tonight, 48 yeah. to 0. Yeah, and a big rivalry game up there. So, Steve, I think you boys can put it on cruise control until the playoffs. Uh, just take care of business, and uh, we'll be talking about you uh, come playoff time. Thanks for yep. calling, Steve. I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I heard maybe they had a little scuffle up there. Well, I don't want to say nothing about it, but I think they might have had a little of the cases. Some of the players got ejected up there. That's what I was what I was told. I don't Steve, know if that's true or not. It's Rutherford County. Nothing should surprise you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Degree. Thank you for calling in. I remember a minute ago we got a we got two games next week. Yeah. We gotta go we gotta make a makeup game with Chase Monday. Yeah. And then we get a chance to go play William Lenore on Wednesday at, on the High Brighton Field. Uh-huh. You know High Brighton like one like forty nothing. Yeah. And we get a, we get like we're gonna take our blue devils up there. And expose them to the high black team. The, that's a feeder team to high black. Yeah. And we'll play that. We'll play them Wednesday at four fifteen up in Lenore, and we'll go up and see what we can do with the, with those young guys. Well, we've got a Kings Mountain guy on the line here, Steve. So I guess I need to get some tissues out and talk to Joel here. But uh, appreciate you calling in. Let us know how it goes next week. All right, fellas. Y'all have a great. Uh, appreciate what y'all do. Y'all do a great job. Thank you, Thank Steve. Steve. All right, Joel. There, Joel. Yeah, hey, Joel. Hey, buddy, you okay? Do I need to send yeah, anybody huh? out to you? Nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, well, we got pizza, think, Joel. If you want to come on by, we can at least give you a piece of pizza tonight. Oh uh, yeah, I, I stopped by. I, I still had left over from uh, Wiener Works uh, from <laughs> earlier before the pregame today. <laughs> the world famous Wiener Works in Kings Mountain. Uh, Joel, <laughs> what happened yes, sir. tonight? Give us some uh, details well, of the game. Well, Huss uh, outplayed us, and we turned the ball over too much. Uh, we just dug ourselves in the hole early, but, you know, we, we tried to keep it close. Nothing to take away from uh, Hunter Huss because they was the better ball team tonight. We just uh, – two costly turnovers what killed us early in the first half, and then and all of a sudden we was down 21 nothing. But uh, Kings Mount, they, they never gave up. Uh, we, we had our chances. Then we just kind of shot ourselves in the foot when we cut it to seven. Then it just that one, that, that penalty, uh, uh, we had them stopped. And then all of a sudden uh, it was a penalty out of nowhere. It, just, it was just too many mistakes tonight to play against a good ball club against us. Well, Joel, I have to ask. 
did you come out without any injuries tonight? Because every time we talk to you, somebody from Kings Mountain has gotten banged up and beat up. Uh, uh, late in the fourth quarter, uh, uh, Pace Hire did get banged up at the end, but I uh, just hope it was just a little minor and everything because he, he walked on his own off the field and everything. But other than that, we we play healthy tonight. It's just uh, – we just uh, – need to eliminate the turnovers and costly mistakes because down the stretch that's going to hurt us. Well, I know that his brother was some speculation he might come back this week to play in this particular game, but I understand he's going to be on the safe side and uh, sit out the rest of the year. Is that what you're hearing? Uh, probably because uh, he's, he's getting offers from basketball and I don't yeah. – He's uh, and plus uh, it's so much basketball season, and uh, he he knows he wants to be out there with his brother and the rest of the Kings Mountain family, and it just it's just tough for him to be out. Well, what about Mac? I know that he's come back, but he's not been the player that he was before the injury. Is he just toughing it out and and playing that way, or is he back fully recovered? Uh, he's. I don't know if he's 100, percent but he's he's getting his strides uh, from game to game. He just uh, it's it's still he's still not uh, like he was a year ago though. He's he's way off and uh, but you know when injuries come up, the bite in the butt it, it it takes a tone on you. But uh, like I said, I just want to give the hats off to Hunter Hus because they had a better team. They was big, fast, and and they they made it count at the end, even though but. It, one thing I got to give Hus, they got they got to stop shooting themselves in the foot with all them personal fouls because they had too many yeah. to, to let Kings Mountain get back in it, and then it just it was just like I, I know Coach McCoy is ready to rip somebody's head off for those costly mistakes. <laughs> well, you've got Ashbrook next week. I saw them tonight. They are very solid up front, and I tell you what, they are quick off of the line defensively. I thought they were in the backfield a lot of times before the football got to the quarterback. They were very tough, made some mistakes down the stretch, and let Crest pull out the victory. So we swap opponents next week. Crest has Huss, and you have Ashbrook. And I wish you success against them. Crest won tonight 31-20, to but watch out. They are a, a – tougher team than most people give them credit for. Ashbrook always has talent. Uh, oh yeah, they, they're 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 tough. They're just, uh, I heard they're kind of like mixed in with Young and then one game they look good and then the turnovers, they're a turnover machine the next. <laughs> well, I don't know about Kings Mountain and Ashbrook, but I, when you play Ashbrook and Crest, I uh, made the comment in the press box tonight, you either blow them out or it's down to the wire. For some reason or other, they always match up well against us. I hope you guys success next week, Joel. Give us a call and let us know your side of the story on the uh, Kings Mountain and Ashbrook game. I sure will. Uh, and y'all have a good weekend. And uh, tell Terry Reinhardt, go pack. <laughs> go pack. <laughs> We're not telling Terry anything about the pack. Go, go. <laughs> <laughs> go Thank you, Joel. Thank you, Joel. Speaking we got, of pack, they we picked got a up, tough game tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, 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 you do. Uh, speaking of the pack, they picked up East Carolina as a, as a makeup uh, date on that. Um, the pack that is playing East Carolina? Yep. yep. Wow, yep. Scotty Montgomery. Yep, yep, yep. Ooh. This year. This year. This year. And, and I think that they, they agreed to a couple more dates as well on that. So do want to mention that. All right, guys, it's uh, about seven minutes. Yeah, we ready for a break in our cabin? Whenever. All right, let's go ahead and take a break. <laughs> let's uh, make some money, Kevin. We'll, we'll, stretch, our, right. we'll stretch our feet, make a little money, and uh, we'll be right back. We've got to talk about the top uh, 10 and 20 power pole here in just a few minutes. We'll talk about next week's game. And uh, the Braves baseball is on uh, WCSL 1590 AM and 92.3 FM right now. We'll be back. KDC Broadcast. Hey, you've got them all. At Renato Auto Mall in Shelby, they've got Ford, Chevrolets, Buicks, Toyotas, Nissans, Hondas, Kias, GMC trucks, and more. What are we talking about? We're talking about the huge used car selection at Renato Auto Mall. Before you buy, come see Renato Auto Mall in Shelby. And they are now your SUV headquarters. Over 50 to choose from. New and used. All makes, all models, and 10 to choose from. Priced at under $10,000 at Renato Auto Mall. 4423 East Dixon Boulevard in Shelby. Online at RenatoAutomall.com.
The NASCAR Xfinity Series Playoffs. Brought to one of the most demanding tracks on the schedule. Race 3. Here comes Elliott Sandler. He'll dive to the inside. And four drivers will be eliminated from contention. He'll body slam Allgaier coming off the corner. The Bar Harbor 200 presented by Sea-Watch International. They keep it off the fence and it's Allgaier to the line. Saturday at 2.30 on the Motor Racing Network. The Bar Harbor 200 this Saturday afternoon at 2.30 on Carolina Country WCSL. 92.3 FM, 1590 AM. Online at kdcbroadcasting.com. The moment. is in the air and here we go. You can hear replays of it tonight or tomorrow morning. Angles to the right at the 15. You can relive it in your mind over over. What do you stiff arm there? The moment can last a lifetime. Far sideline, he's in the pit territory. But the moment really only happens once. 25 20 takes it to the house. Live in the moment right here on the Tar Heel Sports Network, powered by Learfield. When you walk through our door, we ask how you are, how your family is, how your business is doing, because we are genuinely interested. We know how important conversations are. Since 1926, when Home Trust Bank began, we have been building relationships by getting to know our neighbors. Let's talk today. Visit htb.com, member FDIC. Visit your nearest Home Trust Bank, 224 East Warren Street in Uptown Shelby, and at 100 West Main Street, downtown Cherryville, member FDIC. Farming doesn't follow an eight to five schedule. A slow week is 60 to 80 hours. My land, livestock, and family rely on me. That's why I bought farm insurance from Auto Owners Insurance because every policy comes with a local agent, a real person who lives right in my community, who I can rely on to keep my farm covered no matter what. Your Auto Owners Insurance Agency is Maxwell Hamrick Insurance Agency in Bowling Springs, Shelby, and Spindale. Online at mbhamrickins.com. The train comfort specialist. He's so reliable that buses set their schedules to him. Once, he was the best man for a guy he didn't even know. He's never used a snooze button. The unstoppable train comfort specialist. Just one more reason why it's hard to stop a train. Your train dealer is Forest City Heated and Air at 457 South Broadway Street in Forest City. Call 828-245-1379. Remember, it's hard to stop a train. Hendrick Appliance and Mattress Center in Shelby is having an end of summer closeout sale on window unit air conditioners. Come in now and say big and keep your cool. You'll find 5,000, 10,000, and 12,000 BTU models, 110 and 220 models. Come get yours today and say big. Again, it's the end of summer closeout sale on window unit air conditioners at Hendrick Appliance and Mattress Center, 1241 East Dixon Boulevard in Shelby. Shocking savings! Visit Camper's NRV of Kings Mountain for our monster of a sale open house. October 19th to 21st, open till 9 p.m. We're slashing prices on top RVs like a 2019 Primetime Avenger ATI for just $159 a month. Hurry in for free food, family fun, and fantastic deals all weekend long. These prices are so good, they're scary. So act fast. Visit Campers Inn RV, the RVer's trusted resource, exit 8 off I-85 or campersinn.com. People are talking about when they listen. I listen at work. Mostly at work. Five days a week. The Boss, your beach oldies and sports stations, WHS Shelby, WLON Lincoln, and W268CU Shelby. Well, we're moving on. If you play any, if you play any more, Will, either Will and or Dennis, the shirt's gonna come off. I no, think no, they're no, getting no, excited no. in here. I'm uh, too fat for my shirt. D- to Dennis, come was off. Ta- Dennis was talking about the uh, the legislator. I had to complain about something today. Um, the <laughs> who? Co- I just want to know. The, I don't Dennis, know you might have an you might have an answer to this. I don't know nothing about. I was take I was taking the trash to the dump. Yeah. And uh, and I was told I was told I couldn't put. Oh, no, it's my mic on. Yeah, your mic's on. I, I, I hear you. I can't pretty, hear you. Okay. I can't hear myself. Um, so anyway, uh, and they told me I couldn't throw a pallet in the dump. You have to put it in a barrel, take it apart, put it in a barrel now. 
Well, why would you want to throw a palette away? You do like every other redneck. You paint it red, white, and blue, put some stars on it. Send it out to the for $15. And then, now, see, this is where, not, where I wasn't going. I didn't think yeah. this was going to go there. But at some point, the question that I actually had, <laughs> is there a person who stood up in our legislator, at our Senate, Congress, whatever, North Carolina House, and actually said to other adults in a room with suits and ties on, Guys, we can't be throwing pallets in the in the, gar- in the uh, in, out out here in the uh, that was in the locally. landfill. So I could throw a couch in the same bucket, that, but I can't throw was, a pallet, and it's made that of wood. That was done locally. Yeah, locally. that's probably local. That's, that's no, he said local. North Carolina. He said North Carolina. North State, Carolina. statewide. I was told. Mm-hmm. I'm just asking. Environmental. Either way, so what I'm oh saying boy. is, some guy oh in a suit God. stood up oh and, and boy. Had, somebody he, had to talk he's about that. He brought out the. Big guns. I had a question for Terry, and he's gonna see if he can pull it. He's see if he can pull it out. So this this is the uh, it's Chuck McSwain in case you're looking. This Terry. Right, this is uh, <laughs> the internet before the uh, internet. So if everything goes down on the internet, this is what we got. Uh, Terry's brought his big file out, and some kids don't even know what files are. Uh, I would imagine well, they don't nowadays. know what notebooks are. Uh, what's a notebook, Terry? Oh, they don't know it in Chippy High. My son has a. He, he, he has <laughs> he a. Threw his son under the bus so quick. <laughs> they they have a, um, a laptop that they carry. Do all they work on the laptop. Yep, they that's, that's good. Any. Hey, uh, we, we do Kevin, have. A, Kevin used to do some work on a laptop too. <laughs> <laughs> we do have. Cam Newton stole my laptop. Cam Newton did not steal <laughs> your laptop. That's what. What? That's, that's somebody stole it. That was the first person I thought of. We interrupt this comedy routine for Jeff. He's on the phone. Jeff Jones on line. Jeff, did Cam Newton ever steal your laptop? <laughs> Jeff, you How's there? everybody doing? Oh. Oh, this ain't Jeff Jones. It's Jeff Miller. Sorry, Jeff. So we thought it's Jeff Jones. Jeff Miller. How about the Forest View Jaguars tonight? Big win. Yes. Uh, um. 46 to 22. I mean, it was sort of up and down in the first half. Uh, I mean, North Gaston, before she went up 17 to nothing in the first quarter, then North Gaston in the second quarter cut it to 17 to 8 with a touchdown and a two point conversion. Running then force you uh, put a field goal up uh, toward the end of the first half. And then, then one of the wildest things I've seen after a North Gaston turnover. Um, so they blocked the whole Kloniger field goal, and that ball went flying toward the um, between the 30 and the 40 yard line of Forcey. I don't think I've ever seen that before, but North Gaston wasn't able to capitalize on it. Uh, and then in the second half, Forcey just uh, took right over, and it was 40 to eight after the third quarter. Then. Force you kind of brought uh, well 33 to eight after the third quarter, and Force you started subbing in the fourth quarter, and North Gaston did score a couple of oh by the way touchdowns uh, um, in that period, and I guess that you can say they won the fourth quarter 14 to 13. Well, very good for the Force you Jaguars, Chip. I, I know you've got the Burns Bulldogs coming up next week. Uh, Burns had a tough loss tonight. They lost uh, 42-38 to Stuart Kramer. So you know something about Stuart Kramer. That gives you guys a, a good uh, uh, measure to judge by. That sounds like it's going to be a very exciting game for Burns and Forest View next week. What do you see happening in that game? Well, um, now Forest View left some points out there tonight and of course North Gaston did also. Um Force you played well enough to win and you know win big but you know now the competition's going to go back to being a little bit stiffer, you know, because they got Burns, Hunter Huss, Kings Mountain and then Stuart Kramer, you know, the aforementioned team and you know, I think the Burns game has the potential to be a really big shootout to, you know, they got some good players on offense, uh I know they give up a lot of points on defense, but you know I'm also aware that there's a week where you see the good burns and a week where you see the bad burns. And I got to see them play against Ashbrook, uh, um, and I think two turnovers in that game are what did them in in that game. Well, with high school kids, Jeff, the key is consistency, and the teams that are most consistent are the ones that have the best record. 
And it's hard to control high school kids to get them to be consistent. Looking tonight at Forest View, what did you see that um, said this is a team that's on the upswing? Well, um, I felt like, uh, um, especially in the second half, I felt like they used a more balanced attack, uh, you know, rushing with uh, um, Javon. Jamarian Dawkins and uh, Jalen Mims and then, of course, Jacob Ash and then some good passing by uh, the quarterback, Jake Lee. Um, he can run it or pass it. Uh, but uh, then the defense forcing four turnovers, I felt like uh, oh, that's, that's good when you got a defense that can force turnovers like that. Uh, you know, they just have to, you know, continue that and, you know, have to um, try and uh, they're just going to have to raise the ante a little bit because uh, Burns is going to be a very tough team this coming week. Well, we'll be interested in hearing your report next week on the Burns Bulldogs and the well, uh, Jaguars. Well, let me stop you right there. Um, I'm actually going to cover the Crest at Hunter Huss game next week. <laughs> Well, we'll certainly be interested in hearing your report on you're that see one. You're a sellout. <laughs> he's, he's a, you're a sellout. I ain't going to the game of the week. I ain't, I ain't even worried about the Jaguars next week. I'm done. Well, um, I just did it because on my Carolina Varsity um, and my blog, you know, I have, uh, you know, Hunter Huss is my number one team and Crest is my number two team. And you know, I promised uh, my viewers and you know, the people I write with you know, that I'd be covering that game, you know, because of how high I have them ranked. Yes. So well, I, any any predictions you want to make about that game while we've got you on here, Jeff? <laughs> right now, I honestly have to say uh, I favor Hunter Huss in that game. Well, based on the performance tonight of Hunter Huss against Kings Mountain and Crest against Ashbrook, I, I think I would agree with you at this point. I, I would give the nod to Hunter Huss. Uh, strange things happen down there. Uh, Hunter Huss sometimes is undisciplined, but I'll give it to him. This year they've strung them together, Will. They're, what, 7-0 and now? Yes. So, uh, Jeff, uh, why don't you come? Uh, they're going to be at Huss next week, so I'll be waiting for a report because I won't be able to be at that game. My drop cord doesn't reach that far. So uh, call us in and let us know how it goes, Jeff. I got you covered. Thank you very much. And uh, give a plug for your uh, site there, Carolina Preps. Um, Carolina Varsity. Or, oh, Carolina or, Varsity. Varsity. <laughs> yep. That was Kevin. It's this, he wasn't commenting. I, I, was, I had to sneeze, Jeff. I'm sorry. I was, he wasn't commenting on the website. I tried not to fall off my chair. <laughs> All right, thank you, Jeff. Jeff, Appreciate have a good night. Call. Be careful, buddy. What was that, Carolina Varsity? Right, thank you. Carolina Varsity. Carolina Varsity. Uh, breaking news, Dodgers up 3 to nothing now, bottom of the fifth, uh, one out. And, uh, so wow. you can listen to that on 1590 AM, 92.3 FM. Why is that breaking news? What do you mean, why is that breaking news? Because we carry the Atlanta Braves here on yeah. KTC oh. Broadcast. And William. William. We are <laughs> William. Uh, Will, uh, William. Uh, William. 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 I, I like to meet this guy, <laughs> William. Y'all keep mixing. I don't, I don't know that guy. You. Is it Will, William, Willie, Bill, Bill, Billy? Hey, Willie boy is here. <laughs> uh, Bobby's on the line. Uh, talk to you guys. All right. Wait a minute. Well, he's going to be on in just a second. <laughs> says Calvin. Hey, Bobby. Hey. What's going on with you? What about my girls on the line? Right. They are your golden lines are fifty three zero and one against Chase. Yeah, well I'm just so happy that uh Shelby won tonight. Uh it was a big a big win for the Golden Lions. Uh just hoping uh, that they continue to do this. I was uh talking with one of the players tonight and I was asking him what do you think that uh, we need to do to try to keep this uh, keep us on the winning track? And uh, he was saying that both sides just got to play real hard, and uh, we have to just work on trying to not go three and out uh, most of the time. Sometimes when we uh, uh, go out there on offense, uh, the defense played played a pretty good game tonight. It's just a few things we still need to work on. Uh, Steve was saying earlier. Uh, 
You know, Chevy Hyde's had a long tradition of uh, playing against Chase and uh, always coming out on the winning side. And uh, But nevertheless, I'm just so proud of my Golden Lions because, you know, they never give up. Uh, uh, even though their record is, uh, I think the record is four and three now. We're uh, back on the win, uh, winning side, and uh, I just hope that we'll continue to do this. Uh, this is one thing I've been looking forward to Chevy doing uh, this season, and I'm just uh, thankful that they're on, uh, that they're still on the winning track. Well, Bobby, you're back in conference play now. <clears throat> Next week you've got RS, and then after that you've got East Gaston. But then comes the test for the Golden Line. You have the East Rutherford Cavaliers and the South Point Red Raiders. If you can well, you win know, those games to close out, you will be conference champions and probably a number one seed going into the playoffs, Bobby. Well, I, I just want to say that I just hope they'll continue to just hang on in there. And as the season goes on, they're going to get stronger. I, I was uh, like one of the coaches was telling me tonight. We're just going to have to continue to improve in a lot of areas and especially hope that uh, Isaiah Best will continue to just hang on in there and uh, try to uh, play, uh, uh, get better as the season goes on. Um, I, I was watching him uh, uh, when he threw that 97-yard touchdown. That was a very beautiful play, and, and that's the way I like to see him play. Uh, but sometimes he's just off, but nevertheless, I'm sure he's going to get it corrected before the season's out. And well, hopefully that the whole team would just continue to work together and pull together, and uh, and, uh, and the Golden Lions are going to come out victorious the rest of the season. Well, one thing you can say about the Shelby Golden Lions is traditionally they've gotten better as the season goes on, and I predict that's the case with this year's team as well. Yeah, well, you know, uh, I'm going to say this one thing. Uh, you know, Shelby is a team that never gives up. And just like we did it back uh, the year that we had lost three in a row, and uh, won, the red, won our way to the state, we can do it this time. I still believe that we got the team to do it with. The thing of it is, we just got to go out there and play heads up football and put some points on the board and play good defense. And I believe if we do that, we'll win another state championship, hopefully. Well, Bobby, I know that uh, you had back the 98 state championship players tonight. As, um, give us a little shout out to some of those guys and and uh, the success they had 20 years ago. Can you believe it, Will? Yes, I, I remember that so oh so well. They they just really uh, uh, there were several of them there tonight. I did get to talk to some of them and uh, you know the Harris boy. That I believe he was the quarterback that year for the Shelby Golden Lions and uh, they uh, I just never will forget that uh, they they just really hung in there and they really fought and, and they fight. And if I didn't, I was talking to Chris Norman tonight. He was the coach at that time. And I just thank him for a job well done that he did that year and, and, uh, uh, to uh, lead the uh, Golden Lions into victory. Well, I'll tell you what, Bobby, the beat goes on. Call us next week. Tell us about the, the game that you guys have got coming up with RS and, of course, East Gaston followed by East Rutherford and uh, South Point. And those last two games, Bobby, that's going to be for the conference championship. So we want to we'll wait to hear from you about how those go. Okay. Well, we just, as I said earlier, we just hope that she to just take it on in and just get out there and just work hard, get a good practice in, and I'm sure the Coast Lance is going to take us to another state championship. All right, Bobby. We appreciate your call. Thank in. you so much. You and Steve Degree, keep us informed about the Shelby Gold. We'll do it. Thank you very much. Kevin, uh, what's on your mind tonight? It's almost uh, top ten time. Oh, top, ten. top ten. Top ten. Yeah. There's what been an a exciting shuffle. time of the year. Will, Will, look up there. Will, turn me up a little bit. My arms ain't that long. Me and Dennis are both in the four. Okay. That one right there. Yeah, that, that one. There you go. Uh, uh, Terry, did you put that book on a diet or is that a different one? That, that 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 book will make that Toyota of his lean to the right. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> that other book he came out here. That yes. Was, that was like that was the whole history of North Carolina football. It has to sit in the middle of the truck. <laughs> the Torah <laughs> is not that big, Terry. <laughs> it had everything but the question I needed. I stumped him. Yeah. I stumped Terry. It had everything in that book but the question I needed. Uh, there was a team. I think it was either two. I think it was 2000 and 2001. Those two chase teams, with, uh, and, and maybe somebody could let us know for sure. Um, but one of they ended up tying, I think, to 
get in the playoffs and then didn't and then lost on a tiebreaker and they missed the playoffs that year. They, they were five and six or, or six and six or six and five, something like that. And I remember playing against those teams and they had some they were one of the uh, everybody was like, well, which one was who were the hardest teams you played against? And honest to goodness, those chase teams were the hardest hitting teams that we played against. Shelby's foes fa- so fast I couldn't even hit them to know if they hit hard enough. <laughs> Everybody's like, Shelby's going to kill you. I'm like, no, the ain't going to run right by me. <laughs> <laughs> there they go. They're going to kill Again. me. <laughs> but, but seriously, Chase went through us. And uh, so um, they were a lot tougher. They had, they had a running back. It, it just kind of made you compare them to like, a, like an Eddie George type running back. He played basketball, too. I remember I had to guard him in basketball, too. We kind of talked a little bit. Because growing up, we was in JV, and, and we just kind of played each other. In the paint and and I can't remember his name for no. No, he's bigger than me. I was not trying to what, do yeah. anything physical what with him. What the white I was using all speed and smarts on him. I can't Wasn't the white name. side kid that played for the Colts, was it? No, but they had two defensive ends that played. And I remember we were running uh, one play, and we ran an end around. And uh, we, we'd like to sneak in our fastest player. The poor kid's a freshman, you know, but he's the fast skill in the field. We like to sneak him in on the end around every once in a while, run our two tight ends. And we ran the end around one of them. You know, I'm running a play fake on the option. I have my back turned to the play. Oh, dear. All I hear is a thud, and I could hear the crowd behind me go, ooh. <laughs> 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 so, like, that was third down or something. So, it, or, so we went to punt, and I went over the sidelines, and Deontay's sitting over there, and they got him some smelling sauce and stuff, too, and he's just out of it. And I – and I – we come in the next the next uh, series. They come up and they're like, "All right, uh, we're gonna run the option right to the guy who just you know Hulk Hogan this kid." I'm like, "No, we're, we're going option left." <laughs> that was the first play they called. Like, no, I'm not, because we were running the option then off the end too. So I was co- I was gonna get hit by him. That was the play. Kevin get hit by this guy. And I'm like, no, we're going check, the other way. <laughs> you, know, you know, you're speaking of stuff. and I'm some good I'm teams. Gonna, I want to mention those, mention those two teams. Yeah, and I'm going to get on my son because he played against Shelby back in early 2000s. And there was a lot of times, it West, I mean, Shelby run the ball. And there's a lot of times West Lincoln would pack out 10 guys up there. And Nathan was a safety. And they would just separate. And next thing you know, my son's like one-on-one with a guy coming right at him. You know. And, <laughs> oh, I know where you're at, uh, <laughs> I, I like to tell a little story as far as safety. <laughs> as far as playing safety against Shelby, I got shook one time from 15 yards away, Will. <laughs> <laughs> I expected the corner to kind of make any type of a play, but so I come up in the hole, and, the, and, the, and, it, and it, it had opened like, you know, the Red Sea, and Antoine Petty came running through it. You remember it a little, he was small and fast, right? So he was on the 20, and I was about to start out on the 5. I come up, and I looked around, and it was just me and him. I'm like, I got to make a play. I don't know what I'm going to do. And he went to <laughs> shake me, and I'm like, I still ain't decided what I'm going to do. And I just, my knees just buckled, and I fell down, and he just walked right by me in the end zone. Most embarrassing play I've ever had in my life. Do we, do we have film but, on that, but Terry? At Shelby, <laughs> it, I, yeah. I'm telling you. Oh, wow. You feel like you get out in the space sometimes it, as a safety, too, because you're like, I've got to knock him down no matter what way. i got to do something. I mean, we're Safety's sitting in the stands, credit, and we're going, no. uh-oh, this is not good. <laughs> <laughs> no, because, yeah. Yeah, you have to resort to different ways. You got to bring it down by the face mask, whatever the, the horse collar. I think the safety's collars are the horse collar. I don't think guys. That was twenty years ago. Y'all didn't have a horse collar. Yeah, I mean when I had Hulk <laughs> Norris down, I, had, I got called for horse collar. With <laughs> <laughs> you have never in your life ran it's, it's down. Ang- it's about angles. Norris Hopper. It's about angles. Wait, wait, wait. You have never <laughs> in your. <laughs> Radio Land, he has never no. in his life came close to no. running down North. Carolina. In my car, somebody at the fair uh, the other day, uh, <laughs> Joe Cook came by when Calvin and I were doing the broadcast and gave me a Norris Hopper card playing baseball professionally. Looks like that one. I we should got give it to somewhere. Kevin because that's as close as he yeah, ever got to Norris. It's, it's got. that same card uh, right, uh, right up there yeah. on the board. I got one there too. You go. Uh, well, I'm going to tell you, Norris Hopper, I stop him every time that I see him. He's got the ball in his hand. He signed a football of mine. I stop him every time. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to put it in in that 98 team, too. <laughs> oh. I'm going to put, put my – Meanwhile, back I gotta, to the That's right. I, I've, got, I've, got to, I've got to put my den into the 98 championship oh, Lord, team. here we go. Will, all I know <laughs> is that at some point during that season, that 98 Shelby team trailed Cheryl. Six to nothing. Six to nothing. Yeah. That's all I'm oh saying. Boy. That's the only thing I have to uh, say. Okay. 
Well, I'm done. What else y'all want to talk about? I do want to know <laughs> the, final the end score. result of I that game. Terry's book. You got Terry's book didn't stay in I, here. I, so I, I do want to know the end result of that game that they we trailed, we trailed, trailed six to nothing to Trevor. <sighs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I just said, I didn't say anything about that. I said, that Shelby at team some trailed point, the Trevor Lyman in 1998. On, on your touchdown ball. I was not no. That was not. I was not in that game. We were. We were. We were well behind when I threw that part pass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, don't, I don't even know if the JVs were out there on defense yet, Willie. <laughs> it was first half. I'm hoping it was the first teams still out there, but I don't know. Thank you for it joining might, us might, this trip down it. memory lane. But let's That's give right. the scores, <laughs> Will. Yeah, it is time for some scores. Uh, <laughs> the upset of the night, though, uh, t- Terry North Lincoln. Uh, over East Lincoln, right? How many people would sit back this far into the season, we about midway through a conference season, and say North Lincoln is three and zero? Yeah. I mean, there's, no, I mean, there's nobody. Everybody has predicted Maiden to win this conference. I mean, North Lincoln was down there below. They were, I mean, it was about like a West Lincoln. West Lincoln's over exceeding what they said they'd do. North Lincoln's doing the same thing, you know. So. Well, uh, no disrespect, Terry, but who would have thought the key battle was between North Lincoln and West Lincoln? Yeah, well, you know, you're right. And I'm going to tell you something else, too. I mean, think about it. They didn't hire, and I don't remember the exact date, but Nick Basil. I mean, yeah. he was hired late. He was not hired early. I mean, you're talking June or July yeah. that he got a job down there. And look what he's done to that team. I mean, somehow or another, he's a good game planner because he, he stopped West Lincoln, and he definitely stopped East Lincoln today. Well, we'll, we'll see what's going on next year. Will, let's run those scores for him. All right, uh, Hunter Hus 38, Kings Mountain 21, Ash, uh, Crest 31, Ashbrook 20, Stuart Kramer 42, Burns 38, Shelby 49, Chase 0, Mountain Out of Charter 41, Trouble 7, North Lincoln 24, East Lincoln 16. It's all kind of stuff in my way in case y'all watching me bob and weave over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bessemer City, 28. New England Academy, 14. South Point, 42. East Gaston, 0. Uh, Forest View, 46. North Gaston, 21. St. Stephen's, uh, 55. Uh, West Cartwell, that's 7? Seven? 7. seven. I can see that. Uh, Patton, <laughs> 29. East Burke, 7. Where are we at? Lincoln and Bandy's? Yeah, Lincoln Bandy's Lincoln. wins over Lincoln in 27-7. West Lincoln 35-14 over Newton Conover. And you, if there was any more red in one place uh, tonight, it had to be there. Uh, uh, I bet you couldn't tell who was who out there. About RS Central falls to East Rutherford 48-0. While Tauga 43-23 over Hickory. Bunker Hill with the first win of the season, 37-20 over Drone. High Brighton 53-14 over Ford McDowell 48-28 over South Caldwell Freedom 38-26 over Alexander Central. Alexander Central past two weeks, Terry. What's all totally good. have no been well. hammered out? Hammered. Do they have any injuries? That's what I. Uh, some maybe someone can let us know. The whole team. <laughs> <laughs> but this sets up Freedom <laughs> versus I mean, Watauga for the, the league Yes, the it whole, is. The whole thing. <laughs> Highland Tech falls uh, to Pine Lake Prep 26-14. Thomas Jefferson squeaks by Ooh. at Community School of Davis in 49-46. This score was 49-26, to and they were late in the fourth quarter, and it ends up 49-46. Now, I don't know whether he put all a bunch of subs in. I mean, you know, I know that can happen. He got wild. If yeah, he did, it wasn't a good move. No. <laughs> Maiden wins tonight, 39-14, Lake Norman Charter. All right, time for our top 20. All right, I can't Ooh, wait. Right, down Give me the, that drum roll. Down the Hall of Shame mm. goes in no particular order. I'm not going to name your records or points, but here's the people down the Hall of Shame that do not make our top 20 board. Highland Tech, North Gaston, Cherville, Pine Lake Prep, Union Academy, Lincoln, RS Central, Chase, Lake Norman Charter, and East Gaston. These are all Aww. teams, of course, in our four conferences. Southwest 2A, Southern Where's Piedmont 1A. Way? Um, who else? Well, my South Fork 2A and the Big South 3A. All right, Will, you ready for the get the top 20? Be excited. Crest is, keeps getting closer. I'm so proud of y'all this year. And next <laughs> and next week, 
should be the show. Next man. week, y'all, follow one, two spots. All right, here we go, number 20. <laughs> I'll tell you what, for a guy from Cherville, he sure does have a lot of it. Never mind. <laughs> number 20, Community School of Davidson at negative three points. They're four and three on the season. Number 19, the Burns Bulldogs. They fall one spot from last week after the loss night to Kramer. Uh, they have negative two points total. Uh, they are two and five on the season. Negative one power points. That'll be, nope, I skipped over one. Negative two, back in the top 20 after a few upsets early in the season. Best for City is now <laughs> number 18 in the power <laughs> pole. Uh, they're getting ready to move on up. Speaking of moving on up, the, the Yellow Jackets are back in the power pole. Newton Conover, they're now at 17, negative one power points. And now we get to all the teams with positive power points. You get power points, 1A, 2A, 3A, and 4A victories, 1, 2, 3, and 4 points. Uh, you lose none for a 4A. You lose one for a three, lose two for two, and lose three for a one a loss. All right, so that leaves us. Where was that? Mountain, uh, the Mountain Island Charter, number 16. The Raptors at five and two got one point. Our next three teams all have five power points, so the, uh, the tiebreaker in that uh, scenario ends up your overall record. So Forest View at 15, East Lincoln at 14, and North Lincoln at 13. North Lincoln five and two. And, and East Lincoln there, four and three. So North Lincoln gets the nod over those two teams. Number 12, the Stuart Kramer Storm with a big win tonight uh, against Burns. They move up to four and three overall, six total power points. At number 11, the Shelby Golden Lions still hanging around in there, seven power points. Big win tonight over Chase, four and three overall. Is that really a big win? For the Golden Lions. It's a historical win. How about that? Historical. <laughs> no matter which way you look at it, it is a historical win. Uh, all right, top 10 time. Shelby is out of the top ten. They actually tie with the number of power points with the number ten team. The number ten team is five and two. The Golden Lions four and three. The Maiden Blue Devils are number ten. Number nine, the Ashbrook Green Wave. They fall tonight. They are now four and three overall with eight power points. Number eight with eight power points. Seven and zero oh, undefeated. The Thomas Jefferson Griffons are number eight. All right, Terry, you Rebels, back up in here. Six and one overall. Even though North Lincoln beat them, but North Lincoln lost twice, and, and folks wonder how that how they end up like that. Well, North Lincoln lost Alexander Central, which everybody thought probably could should mm -hmm. could or should happen. But Terry, they opened the season with a loss to Thomas Jefferson, and that hurts your power pole. They lost three points on that, so that's why they're so much lower than West Lincoln right now. He's six and one with nine power points. That three point loss to, to Thomas Jefferson is going to hurt you pole wise. Uh, as far as we go, you, any news and notes about the Rebels tonight, Terry? Uh, no, I was looking at it. I know six out of the seven that are in front of us, we would probably beat. I'm, I'm just <laughs> cannot believe they do not schedule us. <laughs> Only six of the seven. Yeah. I guess we That's what I'm saying. I didn't Hunter Huss. Why did I ask yeah. him a question? That's what, <laughs> Huss is the only. That's the. That's the only one he's worried about. That yeah. Saying. Okay. That's uh, because the others aren't scheduled. <laughs> <laughs> South Point is number six with eleven power points at five and two. The Bandy's Trojans are six and one overall. They've got twelve total power points. I Pink. give you Bandy's Terry. You could probably do They're going to play here in a couple of weeks. Ain't that right, Terry? I would pull not for West. Not I would pull down, for West man. over Bandy's. To, to West has got – their next three games are pretty critical. they got a big rivalry game at Lincoln the next week. Uh, a lot of fighting yeah, words in that yeah, one. That and then work. they host Bandy's. Bandy's is coming into Rebel Country, Terry. Is that right? That's it. Bandy's coming to Vail. they going out in the Vail. That's going to be, I'm gonna tell you, it'll be a good the, game. I'm going to be honest. The one that I'm worried about is next week because I know it's Lincoln, but it's Lincoln's homecoming. you got to be – I mean, you got to take care of business. you got to know what you're doing when you go down there. There you go. I mean, it's their home. And they I mean, finish at Lake Norman Charter. How Charters, dare so. them schedule the West Lincoln Rebels for homecoming? Number four in our power poll. They fall two spots tonight. They switch spots with the other four to the four team from last week. Kings Mountain is number four with 13 total power points. They are five and two overall. Number three in the power poll, undefeated, 7-0, and oh, East Rutherford Cavaliers. They've got 15 total power points. East Rutherford, though. Uh, if you look for a weakness, defense giving up a lot of points this year. Uh, they didn't give up any, however, tonight to RS Central Hilltopper. Shut Will, them out. Will, do you, do you see what I see? Mm -hmm. Last week, we I mean this week, I know what y'all are looking at. This week we had one versus two. Yeah. And then next week on KTC Broadcasting, That's set up. we're going to have one, one versus, versus two, two. <laughs> again. Y'all yeah. fuss about my power poll and what has happened the last two weeks. Thank y'all. You're welcome. Congratulations. Oh, Pat me on the back. Here we go. What? 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 
uh, the, we told you the cream would rise to the top. And we've got one versus two here in the end of the season, uh, near the end of the season, three quarters away. Chris Mark Huss beat. and Chris. Chris has been. They deep. got beat by Weddington. He got beat by ten. <laughs> West Link has lost one game by one. So I mean that. <clears throat> Uh, do we have I an mean, off? Hey, you know, listen, they're changing the playoffs. If, if we can get the AD from West Lincoln and the AD from <laughs> Chris right to, to meet together, He's can busy. we get this I, game, please Will. get this game Will. scheduled for next year <laughs> well, so we can no, stop we all the rumbling? We don't have to rumbling. wait until next year. The North Carolina High School <laughs> Athletic <laughs> Association has given the teams in West uh, an extra week off. Maybe in a week off, we, we got to recover get, injuries. We could get you guys to come down, or we'd actually go to Bay. Yeah, there our, we go. Our number two team Uh-oh. in the power poll with 16 points at six one is the Crest Chargers. Congratulations. I can't believe it, Will. Where did we start out at? Oh, 20th? No. <laughs> I, I think like we were around eight. the corner. So it was like eighth or ninth, and then you, then you so lost. Late. And so you started wide, and then like I lost for you. So I don't know. Anyway, number one, power <laughs> number one, the power pole this week, um, and you know, guys, uh, yeah, y'all yeah, will win the tiebreaker next week if you do win. So, if Chris wins next week, they will be number one. Yep. You will win the tiebreaker in the power pole. So you win on the football field if you can win, but you still got a tiebreaker in here in my room. So, you, but, well, but I'll give you the tiebreaker. If it, to I'll, quote I'll, I'll, Dandy Don, Don Meredith, that. Dallas Cowboys, nineteen sixty-seven. If ifs and buts was candy and nuts, so what a Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas it'd be. Y'all know Coach Quattlebaum, don't you? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. He, he, won, he won Coach of the Year one year, and they made him a T-shirt that said, if and buts, cherries and nuts, you'd, we'd all be Coach of the Year. And it had a somebody drew a little uh, Q cartoon. It was not, It was cute. Dad, was you ready for a break there? No, nah, I hadn't said who was number one yet. I did. I just did. Who? Hunter, Hunter Huss. Huss. Yeah. He was waiting. That's what he was. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can take a break. <laughs> All right, we're going to be back in a minute. Uh, we'll give the scores and some more in just a few minutes. Talk about next week's football games on ktcbroadcasting.com. They've got them all. At Renato Auto Mall in Shelby, they've got Ford, Chevrolet, Buicks, Toyotas, Nissans, Hondas, Kias, GMC trucks, and more. What are we talking about? We're talking about the huge used car selection at Renato Auto Mall. Before you buy, come see Renato Auto Mall in Shelby. And they are now your SUV headquarters. Over 50 to choose from. New and used. All makes, all models, and 10 to choose from. Priced at under $10,000 at Renato Auto Mall. 4423 East Dixon Boulevard in Shelby, online at RenaldAutomall.com. Join the boss as we broadcast every afternoon at the Cleveland County Fair. Join us for the fun, the food, the rides, the games, the exhibits. Our fair report broadcast are brought to you by the Stamey Tysinger Funeral Home on Stagecoach Trail in Falston, by Sagebrush Steakhouse on Highway 74 East in Shelby, by Diane Ledbetter and Remax Foothills Living on East Marion Street in Shelby, and also at the Cleveland County Fair by Angela's Seafood and Concessions and Catering, located at the Cleveland County Fair, by Peak Resources on the Dallas Cherryville Highway outside of Cherryville, by Me Pablito Mexican Restaurant on West Warren Street in Shelby, by m M&M Tires on East Dixon Boulevard and a second location on West Dixon Boulevard in Shelby, by McKinley Candy Company, located in Goforth Hall at this year's Cleveland County Fair, by Denny's on Highway 74 East in Shelby, home of the Super Slam for $5.99, by Webb Chemical and Paper Company on West Dixon Boulevard in Shelby. So plan now to join us every afternoon as we broadcast live from this year's Cleveland County Fair. For performance you can count on, it's a bush hog from West End Sales in Vail. Trust in a bush hog, a company whose name has become synonymous with the task. That's performance, that's reputation, that's a bush hog. Celebrating 67 years. Coming now for 0% special retail financing for 36 months on select new Bush Hog equipment. Built Bush Hog tough. Yes, for performance you can count on, it's Bush Hog. From West End Sales, Highway 18 North, and Highway 27 West Intersection in Vail. Attention Kmart Pharmacy customers. You are welcome at Medical Arts Pharmacy on Grover Street in Shelby and Professional Pharmacy on East College Avenue in Bowling Springs. Bring your prescription transfers to your hometown locally owned pharmacies. All you need is your prescription bottle for your transfer. 
So if you've been a Kmart Pharmacy customer, you are invited to transfer your prescriptions over to Medical Arts Pharmacy, 108 Grover Street in Shelby, and Professional Pharmacy, 139 East College Avenue in Bowling Springs. Your locally owned and operated hometown pharmacy. Boy, the way Glenn Miller played. Songs that made the hit parade. Guys like us, we had it made. Those were were the the days. days. And you knew where you were then. Girls were girls and men were men. Mister, we could use a man man like Hyman Hoover again. Didn't need no welfare states. Everybody pulled his weight. She our old was sour and great. Those were the days. All right, welcome back to uh, Renato Automall post game show. You know? Yeah, I'll tell you the rest of that ended with, with me ouch, but I'll tell you the rest of it. It was a little funnier uh, going to the next play. Tom Sinifani's on the phone. Uh, Trent Marty's in the house eating all of his pizza. I saw him a minute ago. Yep, thumbs up there from Trent. <laughs> he comes back and, and wipes us out on Friday night. So, what a uh, close <laughs> game. Uh, and it could, could could pull it off there at the end, Tom. Uh, Bulldogs uh, fall uh, at Stuart Kramer on the AstroTurf tonight, 42-38. And you guys have been in some barn burners this year. I mean, it was just uh, up and down the field. I mean, we finished with 516 yards of offense. They had 358. Uh Second half, I mean, uh, you know, first half we gave up some some long plays, especially some long running plays. And when I talked to Cogdell this afternoon. That's the thing that he was most concerned about is is because of our lack of size, a lot of teams like to run right at us, and that's what they did. And Morris, he's a really good back, Kevin. I mean, you you probably watched part of it. He's fast, and when he hit the second level, uh, there's a couple times we couldn't catch him. But they switched in the second half. They went to a five-two, and that slowed down the running game right at us uh, and uh, but that put those corners out there on an island sometimes one on one and if they bid on a fake the guy was wide open and if you saw that last touchdown I mean he was wide open it's just you know just blown coverage and just tough break but uh, some individual standouts you know key one prior 21 carries 280 yards and three touchdowns I mean that, that that's a season for a lot of guys so, I mean he just he just really just had a tremendous game. And, you know, the ground game, you know, you, we had over 400 yards rushing, Kevin, over 454 yards rushing. How often do you lose when you get 450 yards, four yards rushing, man? Like, almost never, but just one of them games, man, just back and forth, entertaining game. More entertaining if your side wins, but uh, just tough break for the Bulldogs. Yeah, you mentioned that, the 450 yards rushing and, and, and losing to uh, – uh, it, we, we actually did, we talked about that a few minutes ago. How uh, that you don't hear that much, um, and, and I guess you just need to if you if you're doing that. And, and you guys, I I, I remember listening there in the second half. I think you had, had a drive that lasted over eight or nine minutes there. Um, I mean, you guys controlled the clock like crazy and still give out 42 points. So it seems like you need to tie up something there on the defensive end. Yeah, you know, like I said, they they're undersized, man, and they just. And they're trying to deal with it in different ways. They're they're trying to get some of their offensive linemen to play defensive line. Uh, you know, they they they're, they're trying everything they can. It seems like it, it's kind of like a it's kind of like a car. You adjust this thing, get this thing thing fixed. Now get now this is compromised. So you got to fix that thing, and then this is. And so I mean, it's just they they've not been able to, to pull all the defensive pieces together. As we, they're just a couple of big guys short. And when you when you have undersized defensive linemen, you're bringing guys maybe a little undersized that should be playing linebacker, they're playing D-line, and then guys that should be playing DB are playing uh, linebacker, and then you've got you know some guys that are a little undersized playing safety, and it's just it's just it's just you know like Coach Devine says, we are who we are when we have to deal with it, and uh, you, you can't question their heart. I will tell you that. I mean, you can't question their heart. You know how hard they play, but. When you're going up against guys that are a little bigger than you, you know, play after play after play, you know, it does wear on you. Yeah, but that one drive that you talked about, it was a 17-play drive. It ended a 17-play drive ended with a field goal, then they had a 12-play drive end with a touchdown. So, I mean, that was textbook of what they wanted to do. And in between, Stuart Kramer had a three and out. 
So, I mean, they just dominated the second half, but then just quick strikes, quick touchdowns, and they were able to get it back. And the one drive, we didn't get a touchdown, got a field goal, and then that was kind of the difference. Each team had uh, uh, six scores, but one of ours was a field goal, and that ended up being the difference. But I don't want to take anything away from Stuart Kramer. They're, uh, they're a good football team, especially offensively. Uh, they're a little suspect on defense, you know, as, as you know, they've given up a lot of points this year, but you know, quarterback's really good. They got a, a, a couple of really good uh, running backs, and they've uh, they've got a chance to give somebody a problem in the playoffs down the road. Oh, Tom, uh, changing gears on you. Justin Verlander and Corey Kluber. Did you get a chance to see any of that today? I know you're an Indians fan. I mean, it was just. Uh, that was just a good old-fashioned butt whooping. I mean, they hit four solo home runs, and uh, saw the boy from uh, Chase, uh, the white kid, uh, got a double late in that game too. And uh, I want to pull for him because I know his daddy, but he's wearing the wrong uniform. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's just uh, you know, it's, 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 you know, his dad coaches over there to, at uh, Chase. I mean, they're just great people, uh, you know, yeah. over there at, uh, at Chase, and uh, it, it just. And it just they just they just pounded us, Dennis. I mean, we didn't have anything for him, and uh, and I like I, I told people that are asking me about that is is thing that concerns me is not only the 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 Houston Astros pitching, which is very good. I, oh, yeah. Our hitting was not very good down the stretch. I mean, we just did not hit the ball. I've listened to a lot of their games on the radio and just not hitting the ball very well. And uh, you know, when you're not hitting it well and you're running a good pitching, that's that's not good. So. Hopefully they can turn around. They got another one tomorrow night, and then, you know it is a seven-game series, so it's far from over. But uh, wasn't a good outcome today. Well, being a Braves fan, I can feel your pain because <laughs> yeah. the Dodgers—they just smacking that ball out of the park. And but I, I just wondered if uh, your brother Danny was going to get up to see that game. I saw him up there at a playoff game last year, and uh, of course you don't have to worry about baseball anymore. The Browns are playing these days, so. Uh, Cleveland, well, Cleveland but, is uh, coming back around, Tom. Well, my brother is at the Ohio State homecoming game oh, today, so okay. He's not. He's got friends in high places. He's met some people from the that are connected to the university, and yeah. all of a sudden, he has tickets. Uh, he used to take me, but now he's got a a new lady friend yeah. that. Uh, uh, that has uh, taken my place. That's okay. He's having a good time. Well, well nothing and, personally, uh, Tom, but she's better looking than you are. <laughs> she probably, probably is. Probably is. But, you know, he's up there having a good time. But, uh, you know, I just want to tell all the, uh, Bulldog, the Bulldog fans out there, you know, keep supporting the team. They're working hard. They're playing hard. I mean, they're they're good kids, and they're just, just coming up short in a few of these tight ball games. It's, it's tough. We'll see what we can do next week with Forest View. All right, Tom. Oh, did it, did you guys hear that uh, Nelson uh, Royster was in an, an automobile accident? I know I had no. it on the radio earlier. I heard your announcement. And I tweeted it out. You go ahead and give an update if you want. Yeah, he. Uh, I just uh, I, I took Matt by the hospital. He's in Gastonia, and uh, uh, it was kind of a, a, a situation where Matt just needed to be there, and I just helped him. Uh, just helped out. His uncle took him home, and his uncle was telling me that. Uh, he was rear-ended, and uh, he lost consciousness for a time, but he's okay now. He's in the, he's in the hospital, and they're going to keep him overnight for observation. But, but he is okay, and he should go home tomorrow. So I know a lot of people that uh, follow Burns that know him, but uh, he's okay, and, uh, and uh, hopefully he'll get to go home tomorrow. Thoughts, prayers here from the KTC family, as always, for uh, Matt and his brother, and uh, of course, uh, uh, all of our fans that call in and listen to our games. That's what makes uh, high school football go around here. Thank you, Tommy. All right, thank you all, and uh, we'll do it again next week. Thank you, guys. All right, have a good night, Tom Zinafani with the Burns Bulldogs. They fall tonight, 42-38. Next week, they do host, I think host, far as you, yes, they do, uh, the Jaguars uh, going in next yeah. week. <coughs> not going to be at that game. He's no, coming yeah, to he's see that game. the one and two teams. We'll, 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 we'll talk about the uh, the uh, Indians in, in a minute and uh, or tomorrow how, how them and the Braves are frauds uh, here in the playoffs. Uh, the only teams that here's why and then we'll, I'll make everybody mad before we get in the morning. Both of those teams, Dennis, yeah, have winning records in their in their divisions, right? Right. 
Braves are 22 games over in their division. Yeah. The Indians are, let's see, they're in the Central, aren't they? 22 games over in the Central. Yeah. Both teams have losing records against everyone else. Well, that's, uh, <laughs> you know. So, you, you want to know why the Braves had not scored a run in two it. games? This one is working right. It is. Do what now? Are you guys recording in there so we, we, we could hear nothing but Terry. Terry, oh, we can record okay. right now. Okay, here. we'll go back there and record it. Uh, okay. <laughs> I forgot you listened on audition. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're, we're listening to that. I, I Where's Robe when you need him? I know. He's, 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 <laughs> he's over in the nursing home. <laughs> he is listening. <laughs> That's he, he it. He told us he was listening. Oh, okay. Watching, Good deal. So I hope he is listening to watching. But, yeah, I was just picking on the Braves and the Indians for a minute. But neither team had a, a winning record against anybody else other than their divisions. And no one else in our division is good. But anyway, uh, top 20, we did that. Let's give the scores one more, a couple more times uh, for uh, night's over with. Terry is going in recording for the night scores. Hunter Huss wins big tonight, one versus two, 38 21 on the road at Kings Mountain. Ashbrook falls against Crest, number four versus seven, 31 20. Number 14, uh, Stuart Kramer wins 42 38 over number 19, Burns. Shelby beats Chase, 49 nothing for the, just say, 53rd time. Did I get that right? 53rd time on in a row. Uh, let's see. Mountain Island Charter, 41-7 to over Cheryl Ironman. And North Lincoln, the upset tonight over East Lincoln, 24-16. Bessemer City wins tonight. Union Academy, 28-14. South Point blanks East Gaston, 42 to nothing. Uh, North Gaston falls to Farsi, 46-21. St. Stephen's, 55-7 to winners over West Caldwell. And Patton, 29-7 over East Burke. All right, Dennis. All right, we had Bandage tonight over Lincolnton, 27-7. It was West Lincoln Rebels tonight, 35, Newtown over 14. Uh, it was East Rutherford over RS Central in a heated rivalry in Rutherford County, 48 to nothing. Watauga took care of Hickory tonight, 43-23. It was Bunker Hill, 37 over Drone, and as Kevin pointed out, both those teams were had not won a game going into that. Uh, Bunker Hill now has one victory, so they're the top dog. All right, um, Maiden 39, Lake Norman Charter 14, and Thomas Jefferson squeaked out one over Community School of Davids tonight, 49-46. Pine Lake Prep 26, Highland Tech 14. Freedom, the Patriots 38, Alexander Central 6. It was McDowell, the Titans over South Caldwell 48-28. And it, no surprise, Highbright 53 Ford 14. Kevin Ford. Next week on KTC Broadcasting. Yeah. Already? Who we got? We got Ashbrook at Kings Mountain. Ashbrook at Kings Mountain. Mm, that'll be good. Forest View at Burns. That'll be good too. We've got Shelby at RS Central. Yes. We've got. Do, 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 do. On the, in the main. I think East Lincoln at Bandy's, maybe. Really? We are Lincoln County game. And we've got Cherville Ironman next week play host Union Academy. What about center court? And then one versus two next week, Hunter Huss will be hosting the Crest Chargers down in Gastonia. Down in Gastonia. Gastonia. Across the street from Carson's house. Oh, really? <laughs> he's maybe in, he'll make so it. He's still, the in, he's still in the party for KTC. Um, so if you if any of you guys want to go over to Carson's house before you all right. Lincoln County game will be West Lincoln at Lincoln. West Lincoln at Lincoln. Yeah. Ooh, Terry. Terry, West Lincoln at Lincoln. Mm. That will be a spirited rivalry as well. Well, folks, uh, we hope you tune in next week to those games. KTC Broadcasting, I've, I've got to stop and say something. It's not bragging about our station, but where else can you find high school football in the quantity and quality you find on KTC Broadcasting. This station spends a great deal of effort, time, and money to provide you with the games that you want to hear about, not just your local team, but all the teams that may affect your team in the standings. You can view teams from Lincoln County, Gaston County, Cleveland County. And just to be quite honest with you, it don't get no better than that, Kevin. Thank you to KTC Broadcasting for bringing us 
right into those uh, to your homes those games and tomorrow morning you guys need to make sure you check out our morning show uh, as always the campers in Saturday sports talk we'll be talking about all the scores and updates and we also talk NFL uh, NCAA baseball basketball football NASCAR race we're going to talk about that ending uh, one of the best endings of a NASCAR race you guys have uh, ever seen it was I'm a I'm a Jimmy I'm a Jimmy fan and I, I still think it's one of the best endings. The rule that made him stop was stupid. Jimmy would have won if they didn't make him stop on that. Roll backwards, you're not trying to win. <laughs> I mean, how's, how do you get penalized for rolling backwards? <laughs> well, you just got to cross the line. It don't matter if you're driving forward uh, or back. I don't know if you, my kid has, uh, and I don't know if y'all y'all probably haven't seen this, but you know, it's kind of like the it reminded me of the Ricky Bobby type thing. Yeah. But the kids got the Turbo movie. Y'all seen Turbo the Snail movie? The snail. <laughs> it's the exact same pretty much scenario happened <laughs> in that race where everybody was just uh, wrecking there at the end and uh, I thought Jimmy's going to get out and push his car across for well, the win. What, what did you think <laughs> about the Roval? I thought it was awesome. I liked it. Uh, okay. those few, they need to make a few adjustments, and, and we'll talk about it in the morning. I think if, the, if they would make the corners a little wider so you can pass more, uh, it would be more exciting if you could go two wide in the corners, I think, instead of one wide in a lot of them. But we'll talk about that tomorrow. Real quick tonight, uh, we're going to get the scores in one more time in just a minute. Our top ten again, Huss one, Crest two, East Brother for three, Kings Mountain four, Bandy's five, South Point six, West Lincoln at seven, Thomas Jefferson eight, Ashbrook nine, Maiden ten. Next week, like we said, we'll have Ashbrook at Crest. We'll have Farshu at Burns. Nope, I said that wrong. I, I forgot to put my mark there. Hold on. Ashbrook at Kings Mountain, uh, Burns hosts Forest View, Crest at Huss, Shelby at RS Central. You can watch all of those games on KTCBroadcast.com. Then you can listen to on WLON West Lincoln at Lincoln and Cherival hosting the Union Academy. Guys, uh, y'all, y'all two Crest guys. Uh, uh, Carson will be here in the morning to talk about his Huskies. Uh, how you feeling about that game? Feeling good. So you got crest by 24. I got crest by a little bit. <laughs> by a little bit. I, I'll be honest with you. I'm a little concerned. Yeah. Because of crest recent um, penalties. They've gotten a lot of penalties. Uh, they played sloppily. Um, the, the line tonight uh, was penetrated fairly easy. Um, I don't want everybody to think, oh, I'm just a – you know, a Crest guy, I, I, I tell it like it is, and I think the Crest folks would say, I agree with you. We've got some uh, cleaning up and some improving to do, and Huss has it together right now. I would caution you, though, Terry, history holds that Huss is not very disciplined in some things. They've shown this year that when they are disciplined, they're very capable of winning, and they have some great athletes. And uh, if I had to call it right now, I'd probably say Huss will win that game, and that will drop Crest down below the West Lincoln <laughs> Rebels, Terry, which would make you happy. In my heart, I'm going to pull for Crest. I hope Crest wins, but I'm a realist. I think Huss is probably the better team at this point. Wesley's got to win like three more games, and y'all lose three games for them to catch y'all. <laughs> Sorry, Terry. <laughs> On that one. Hey, it's the it's the fuzzy math we deal with. <laughs> fuzzy, that's a funny board. <laughs> uh, so, uh, real quick, Braves uh, will play on Sunday and scheduled for Monday as well. They do not play tomorrow. If you folks uh, want to know about that, it's on WCSL right now. Right? It is seven games right now. All right, so the Dodgers are up three to nothing right now on the top of the eighth. Uh, so if you're going to get to Atlanta, you got to get there by Sunday. You going with? No. <laughs> you gonna not, a fan, <laughs> not a Braves fan. Not a Braves fan. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, I do want to make some uh, uh, quick notes for for our announcers that did send in your players of the game. Uh, Brent did send in his uh, for Shelby tonight. Uh, Donye Fuller five carries, 74 yards on touchdown defense. Jalen Scott. Overall, Jahari Mitchell one rushing touchdown. 118 yards, one touchdown receiving, 55-yard punt return touchdown uh, for Mitchell. Of course, uh, Tom mentioned um, Pryor with, was it 250 yards, or two, 200, something like that. Oh, he was fantastic. Yeah. Outstanding tonight. Um, I didn't get uh, the, the, the player of the game from the Huskies Mountain game. We'll talk about that in the morning from them, uh, as well as our other games. There was one more I was trying to mention. 
I can't find it. But anyway, the the kid. I, I, I wanted to make sure I got the kid from Hus's name right if I could. But if not, I'm gonna get it in the morning anyway. So, uh, just remember, uh, listen to us in the morning on um, let's see, WCSL and WLON, and watch us on KTC broadcasting once again. Uh, guys, final thoughts before we get out of here. Anything? Nice go Browns. Final today. Go Browns. Is that what you want to go say? Go Pack, go. Panthers. <laughs> Giants. Panthers win. Panthers win. If you want to watch some of the worst offensive football, you can watch the Giants and Panthers play each other. <laughs> Terry, <laughs> I knew that would get you. You can't come here. in and talk about the Cowboys offense. I'm not even talking about the Cowboys. <laughs> I just want the <laughs> world to know that North Carolina State is one of only one of 14 teams that are unbeaten. In college football. Oh, Terry, Terry, I got a question for you. Do you re-sign Dez? What's that? Do, Do you, you re-sign, re-sign Dez? Uh, yes. He will yes. not hurt us to come back. Yes. Dad can't throw it to him, so don't matter. That's right. Yes. You know, I mean, <laughs> yes. I'm just going to be honest. I mean, <laughs> yes. he wants to play, and he's mentioned Dallas now. So, you know, yeah. if he's going to mention coming back, hey, you know, maybe you don't They're have to pay him that money. Him. That's the big deal. Him and Jerry get together, huh? I do want to mention something. According to this, the division series are a best of five with a 2-2-1 two, two, ah. format. The, the League Championship yeah. Series and the World Series, of course, seven. best of seven. I thought Will was right on that. I did that. Really mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, so there you go. Now you know the rest That's of the story. <laughs> <laughs> if, you want know, if you want to know your baseball questions, just call Will Boykins at 704. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask him about the Packers, though. <laughs> go, Pack, go. Hey, who's, who's got more ties this year, Packers or Browns? They equal in ties. <laughs> They're tied. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? You just gave us another tie. Thank you, buddy. You're, you're welcome. All right, guys, that's going to do it for the night uh, here on KTC. Remember, tomorrow, Campers in Saturday Sports Talk, myself, Terry Reinhardt, Carson Dockery, Hunter Yancey, we'll be talking about all these scores, some of the games, and uh, Carson was at the Hus, uh, the Highland Tech game, so he'll, he'll give us some info on Highland Tech following tonight, um, and we'll talk Get about that. Get his take on the uh, – Hunter Huss and Chris game. I'd like to hear what Carson has I to say. I know Hunter. Uh, listen, Hunter is a – Nobody want to hear that. Carson <laughs> is a Hunter Huss fan and a Los Angeles Rams fan, so his football team has not lost this year. Wow. He's not seen as the team of his lose this year, so he's having a good year. Oh, he's also a Braves fan, by the way. Hey, North. But they're frogs. North played against East this weekend. I, I, I forgot to mention this. Uh, all you East people, all you North people, your mama – <laughs> is that what they said? Yeah, that is true. Uh, big win tonight, I do want to say. North Lincoln, congratulations. They're 3-0 in the conference, right, Terry? They're, and they've already, they've already wiped out West Lincoln, so uh, easy pickings from here, right? <laughs> <laughs> Them and Betty's begin. All right, we got to go. Uh, KTC Broadcasting. We'll be see you tomorrow on KTC Broadcasting.